and be alive. So Victor, good morning. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> good morning from Washington, DC. <laughs> good morning from Portacot. <laughs> good to see you. <laughs> yeah, same here. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't get to see you when you got you actually came to Portacot, I think last year. Yes. Uh was it yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was last year. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't get to yeah, see you. I, I was um, surprised to see it. <laughs> yeah, this year he invited me to come to uh, to uh, his uh, studio and for the events he's always doing. So I had to steal the moments, you know, <laughs> when I was in a quiet room to just go by road to Potakot. It's nice to see the road is quite good. I used to dread uh, just travel by road. Yeah, from a quiet room to Portacot is good, yes. <laughs> right, yeah. It's, yes, it's good. So we've had quite a lot of people interested in your in your um, wearable art and um is it do you call it in home art? Um well you could call it wearable art, you know, because I mean your mugs and all those yeah. things. <laughs> You, you can, it it catches every every age group and demographic, I believe. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and uh, it's just they're just extensions of my work that I thought yeah. I just had a crazy idea one day. What do people wear it? You know, and um, because otherwise it would be okay. So you want Victor Cook's work? I mean, you could buy a print, or you could buy. Um, the original painting so i thought well you know if if i make it if i put limited editions of this of the works on clothing people can express themselves that way as well and um somehow i've you know modern technology has offered the opportunities to be able to do that by um having them be made on orders so it's when you place the order that is that the that they are made. And oh, really? that means that, right, yeah. So I don't have a huge inventory sitting around for me to, you know, shipping and doing, you know, things like that. So I offer um for each design, the maximum is a hundred. So basically you're actually one is actually collecting my work, so to speak, but in a much uh I think much less expensive than my prints, actually. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that, that prints on paper, and uh, so that's just how it is. And you know, sometimes some some designs don't even last up to. I don't even some that some design I don't keep up to hundred before I pull them just to refresh the lines. So that's uh, uh -huh. you know I offer to people that is it's it's you know. I, it was curiosity that led me there, and then I. All of a sudden, I'm now this. I don't know. People say I'm making fashion. People say I'm making. I don't know. I'm just, I'm just making. Just making art. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm going. I'm going to. I'm going to get there. But I'd like to just say something. Uh, just that because I, I I'll get there. And there's a question I want to ask concerning me. Okay. <laughs> yes. Right. But I'll I'll bring that a bit later. Oh yeah, we, we have quite great okay, somebody let me let me show you what people are saying. I didn't even so yeah. The scarves definitely got me. Oh, thank yeah. you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. And then this one, this is from Marvis. Marvis was a guest, second guest on our show. She said, I want to wear this art definitely. Yeah. It's all yours, just go to the store. <laughs> Get it. <laughs> And this is my sister. She's saying hi. Hi, Jody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's been ages. <laughs> yeah. And she said, you haven't aged. Yeah. <laughs> Without this, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, I, I think that's a decision you just made too. <laughs> well, welcome, Victor, and welcome to everybody. Welcome Ijoma, welcome Essien, welcome Marvis, welcome Jerry, welcome to everybody who is here. Hi Ochuke, hi, I can see you. Hi to everybody. And um, 
a real welcome to my guest who had to wake up at four o'clock, I'm sure, because about uh, 10 30, he sent me a message that he was ready. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you. I really do appreciate you um, accepting in the first place to uh, be on, unplugged and then um, showing up. I hope you catch the rest of your 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 snooze later. I know. As soon as I'm done, I'm like <laughs> I trust. Hi Emeka. Hi. Ah, Jerry. Okay, I think you need to see this. This is what we just have fun on this show. Uh okay. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Afio. Hi, Tendai. Hi. Hi, Isioba. Hi. So let, let me start with that, guys, because I, I've got all these questions I really want to show, ask him. Okay, so we've had this month has been a creative and enterprise series, and we called it the Transformers. And many of our guests on this series, Victor, started off with one career, and moved on to something totally different, but kind of related. But how has the trajectory of your career been held by this certainty that this, what you're doing is what you were born to do? Because you didn't deviate, you just stayed stayed on track. How has that helped the trajectory of your career? Well, I guess I, guess I was born this way, <laughs> so to start with. <laughs> so um, as far back as, I can remember my, my when I was in elementary school, primary two in the school in a tin and then it used to be a tin and division, not local government. <laughs> I'm aging myself. Where are you old? <laughs> so, so, um, I used to be the school artist, so they would pull me from my elementary school at a primary school a primary two to go and make drawings for primary six maybe like uh, wow. to draw maps and biology diagrams and so on and i won my very first art award in that school <clears throat> and uh, my mom encouraged me a lot quite actually and i uh, when it came time for the then it used to be yeah another indices of how old i am it used to be south eastern states Festival of Arts and Culture. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever remembers Southeast States, okay. <laughs> I remember it too. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I won um, for drawing for a teen and division. Um, they said, put me, set me up. My my handwork teacher won for crafts. We hated each other. <laughs> because... <laughs> <laughs> so he thought I was lazy because I couldn't make brooms and bamboo stools, and I thought they were not challenging enough for me to bother. <laughs> you know, I came from I was a, I was a town boy. I came from Uyo. I was you know living with my uncle an aunt in a tin and which is a more rural area and you know stuff like that didn't interest me and so <laughs> uh, <laughs> and he thought i was lazy and i thought well it's the waste of my time so i got a lot of beating from him but we both won for the school <laughs> <laughs> and then from then on i you know my i it was just natural for me and things that i uh I uh, wanted to study in school was fine arts. So I think people would have been surprised if I did something different. Um, so you just stayed yeah. with your, and you said, yeah. you said your mom, your mom helped you. She encouraged you. Yeah, she did. She was an artist in her own right. Even though she, even though she channeled mm -hmm. hers to, to designing clothes, she was a seamstress. Um, but, you know, the talent was there even before I went to school. Um, I'll tell you another story. Um, during the Biafran War, <laughs> so, I was. Um, I Victor, I've, I've revised my age. I've revised my idea of your age totally. I've, I've revised my idea. 
So, okay, let's yeah. just say you're a child genius. You're a child genius. That's all I okay, I'll you can say. say that. So yeah, yeah so that's that's <laughs> how that's how it was, and it, and that's I stayed on that track, and I went to University of Ife, and um, I studied fine arts. When I left University of Ife, I I got a job at the Daily Times as a cartoonist and an illustrator. Um, so that was been within the arts. And while I was in the Daily Times, I had a studio at home. So, uh, you know, I was either consulting or doing some freelance work, which you hired me sometime around that time. But I did the freelance, you know, some work for, for ASO and you. Uh, <laughs> and, <yes>. uh, <laughs> so it was, you know, that's how, that's been my trajectory, you know. Uh, Yes, Daily Times work was great, actually. Uh, in terms of me having a say in, you know, in the, you know, uh, in the political um, uh, commentary in Nigeria, and um, and working under, you know, Yemogumbi was also very. We were given very, very, very wide range to to say what we want to say, and I was saying mine with my work. Um, <clears throat> Even though the, it didn't pay me a lot, the painting I was making in my studio was always paying my rent, not daily times. <laughs> <laughs> but, but daily times gave me a job address. If I had gone to my landlord and said, oh, I'm an artist, I'm sure he wouldn't have given me his house to stay. Definitely not. <laughs> oh. Not then, but if I, maybe now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if I said, Love if that. I said, I, I, you know, when I told you I worked at the Daily Times, oh, yeah, yeah, Daily Times. Okay, that's great. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's, that's, it's, that's it's, how it's, it's actually, been, and I stayed that way. <clears throat> it's, it's really helped, it's helped you to, to know where you were, what you were born to do. I think I'd like you to know that um, you're among the, um, how do I call it? Privileged few. Not everybody, at least in among the people I've interviewed and among my friends, we are not we are not doing what we studied in school. So um, no surprises there. <laughs> no surprises. <laughs> well, I guess in a way, it's I've always I see other avenues as an artist. So. Sometimes people, the, the tendency that if you're an artist, that you only have to paint or do sculpture. It's what I think could be stifling. But there's so many other avenues that an artist could impact their society or make, or make uh, uh, their career. Um, I was an illustrator. I was through the children's book. You know, I was a graphic artist. That means I could freelance in other places for design and get paid for it and um mm -hmm. so similar, several avenues like that that i uh, you know could explore even as even as a designer you could design clothes if you have a good tailor that's also a source of income <clears throat> you know as an artist mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. sticking to one side one aspect of art i think is where you know i even artists broaden their view of what art is I think they stand to benefit from all of the ramifications of all of what 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 it what it gives you. Um, when I was at Ife, I was I was doing several different. It wasn't just what I was doing for extra money. Architecture student would come to me to render the you know their design. So I got paid. So that became I, I became you know a, 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 called it a renderer for architecture. I mean they could draw it, but they couldn't. Some of them couldn't render very well. So I brought in my own talent to be able to render it for them. So it's me doing so many different different aspects of of of, of it. It's, uh, I think it's just to step out of the box and and expand the view of what an artist is. So you actually started um, uncovering that gap and filling it for. I mean, without even knowing that that's what you were doing, you were you were moving. I, I had to yeah. survive. What kind of thing I'm going to do? <laughs> true, 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 true. 
to, you know, from Akwaibom to Ife. That that road far. That's a journey. <laughs> <laughs> That's a journey, my brother. That is a journey. Well, yeah. I agree with you. I'm not expecting you to come back next month and to not ask you for money. So, you know. <laughs> and that time, if they give you, in our time, if they give you 5K, if they give you 5K, that 5K was supposed to stretch. That's I mean, it. I don't think I, I don't think I got 5K. I don't think I, I don't think I got 5K. Mm -mm. I, I think 5K was my first salary or 3K. Something like that. I'm showing my well, age, but I agree. <laughs> <laughs> we all come from somewhere. <laughs> we all come from somewhere. We all come from somewhere. Yeah. I would, I'd like to ask you about apprenticeship. I've, I've had some interesting discussions about apprenticeship uh, on Unplugged, and um, a couple of people think that um, uh, maybe you give out your trade secrets some people think, oh, okay, it's a way of keeping the traditional arts or your arts um, uh, alive and thriving, but they haven't really logged into it. But I know that that is a way in which um, people, it's something that is natural to uh, the art world. What is your take? And do you actually have apprentice, an apprenticeship? ship of course scheme do you have that <laughs> i don't have a i don't have a scheme per se <clears throat> um but when i need assistance um in the studio i do ask um you know a young person who is interested and who is willing to to do the work to come and assist well in that process it's also a process for which they learn certain technique while I'm, while I use their extra hand, um, they, you know, it's not, it's not always about me just, you know, the artist just taking from the younger person. The, the younger person is also taking certain things, certain techniques and so on. Um, I live in the United States, so I don't use that a lot. We work alone here. A lot of, a lot of, we do a lot of stuff alone here. <clears throat> Um, but when I was in, when I was in Nigeria, or you know, I used to, if I needed a canvas stretched, um, you know, just mechanical stuff like that, I could ask a young person to come and help me do this. And in the process, if, you did, if they did not know how to stretch a canvas, I would tell them this is how you do it, and that is also learning. And in the process of them sitting there and watching me work, they would learn certain techniques that I apply. So it's a symbiosis relationship in that way. And um, if the person is interested later on, they could also apply those same techniques to their, to, to, you know, to their work as, you know, afterwards. You know, I, I did a residency in Lagos in 2015, 2016. Um, that was the longest I've stayed in Nigeria since I left. I was there for about four months. I was at um, Art House in Ikoi. So I, <clears throat> I had a, uh, uh, an assistant attached to me. Through that, there's a young, a young man who uh, studied fine arts. I think it's one of the universities in Calabar. Uh, okay. Yeah. And he was, he was there with me the whole time. Um, I brought my tools, you know, power tools and things like that from the US. And um, he was good at welding. I benefited from that because he was quite skillful. But there are other things within my trade that he also learned. Um, <clears throat> how to work with acrylic, for instance, which he wasn't familiar with. And um, I taught him a bit of photography, you know, even gave him a camera afterwards. Just, again, to diversify his idea of how, of making a living as an artist. It's not just what he was trained in school to do, you know, the camera is another tool of, for creative expression. I taught him how to <clears throat> do the, you know, document me working, you know, what angles to take and, you know, just teach him the basics of how to manipulate light using the camera to achieve what he wants. And I think he, he, he went away with that. And that's, you know, um, that's how I've approached apprenticeship in that sense. Okay. Well, you're a self-taught photographer. Yeah. Okay. 
And you say you like <laughs> the old camera, but with new lenses, right? Yeah, that's me as a collector talking. <laughs> I like <laughs> so I like the I like you know when I start learning the slow process of not having um uh automatic uh uh lenses that when you click it it just focuses that I have to actually yeah. turn it. It slows me down to focus, to think and all of that. So it's Okay. You know, yeah, and I, you know, I collect old lenses as well because those old glasses are very different from what they're making these days, and you know that. So, and I have that was a, a whole crap myself. Yeah, I have a I think I have a new, uh, not an, an old Pentax manual camera that I use them for <laughs> in black and white. <laughs> so I have film. Okay. <laughs> you have film. Wow. Um, yep. So those, those okay, are coming back. Actually. Ages. Yeah, they're coming. Yeah, they're, they're coming back. They're becoming sort of a, a thing these days, where you, is it, where you just is it like a snobbish the, thing? Well, not really. I don't snub with it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't mean you, but I mean like you know how people. Okay, we, 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 I like to post comments here. So this is um. Well, thank you, Anoye. Yeah. So she likes yes. the painting behind him. That painting yes. is called Fish, Fish Market. Fish Market. Right. Okay. It was okay. done in 1994, 19, I believe. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. And somebody else loves the scarves. You guys don't just love the scarf, eh? It's bye bye. <laughs> Thank you. And he wants us to turn off the subtitle. No, we are we are promoting ourselves. We're not vex. Mm? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> so let me um go on to this. Um what are the what what influences have shaped your aesthetic and your creative point of view? The influence that has shaped my aesthetics. Um Actually, I think it's just it came out of my during my college years, um, where um, I was fortunate to be taught by people who graduated from, uh, who were taught by the Zaria rebels, who were uh, taught to inculcate the Nigerian culture <clears throat> into our story uh, and as a people, and uh, to look for elements of the culture to use to express ourselves as artists or that you know as, as artists or as literature and so on so uh, while at ife i started to look for my own form because i was you know sort of encouraged to do that and i came that's where i came into in cbd actually while looking for the form you know i was playing with other yoruba forms and then i came across a work of an artist uh um Ubiaro de Chuku, who was using CBD. So I got to know it. I got to sort of, oh, wow, in CBD. Yes, I'm familiar with that. I watched my grandfather do stuff with, with that. And he was a member, he was a member of, you know, the, the, uh, the fraternities that use in CBD. Um, I've watched it being, you know, at play. Mainly what I knew about it was that it's perf as a performative um, art. Okay. Yeah. I didn't so much know about the symbols until I saw the signs and uh, uh, in school. Then I got to go, you know, got closer to it, and I, I started doing my own uh, investigation and research into it. I went back and I asked people questions, and, and I discovered that it's a whole, the whole knowledge system that is indigenous to us that we somehow, you know, I guess discard or try to create. Um, some kind of uh, hoodoo around it, whereas it's, it's really an old knowledge system that we should be proud of, that at least we had uh, forms of communication <clears throat> that was also graphic before the Europeans brought the Roman alphabet introduced to us. Absolutely. It's a different form of, it's a different form of communication, it's a different form of, of writing, of, of graphic communication that's not 
operate on the same principle as the Roman alphabet. So in CBD uses uh, ideas, symbols that represent ideas. The Roman alphabet uses symbols that represent sounds. Sounds, so, uh, yeah. It's, you know, you have these graphic symbols yeah. that represent sounds. When you put them together, they form a word, but CBD takes on a different, a different form. So you have to be within that culture or understand the context for which it is done to be able to, yeah. to get it. And it's not just the graphic symbols, it's, it's the mime, it's, it's the, uh, it's the, if sometimes even, it's even speech. If you could be standing there and they're speaking the same language to you, but you don't understand what they're saying. Because they're it's saying, coded. Yes. <laughs> you know, because <Absolutely>. they're coded, <laughs> yes. Because they're coded languages for members of that group. And they're also gestures. So when you see Ekbe masquerade, they make all those gestures and dancing. It's beautiful choreography. They're coding each other yeah, and decoding each You're other. Right. Yes. So it's really, it's really very, very beautiful. You know, even if as an outsider, you have no idea, but you're just enjoying the choreography. But to the people in the know, they are throwing CBD at each other and, and decoding it. Decoding it. <laughs> I, I, you know, as you're talking, I'm, 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 I'm getting a lot of stuff because um. Uh, we also spoke about um, how, okay, I want to talk about this on two levels, how you have transformed in CBD into a different, well, into a thing to begin mm -hmm. with, and then you've moved, it has moved on from there. And then also how transformed, how CBD was transformed, where it moved from Africa to the new world. You and mm -hmm. I had a conversation about that. And, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think people would like to know because this series is called The Transformers and um, I'd like to see how you move from those symbols which meant um, ex codified experiences to what you're doing now and then also how you were able to link two cultures to, um, in fact, you actually did link Africa and the New World through your work. Um. So <clears throat> this interest is, 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 has been, I'm, I would say I'm, I'm really interested in history and anthropology. And this has guided my work a lot. And it's, I took on these aesthetics, the aesthetics of instability of reducing ideas to their essence. And it is that aesthetic principle that has guided my work as, as an, as a, in abstraction. Um, and through the years, basically just reducing, you know, forms in that way. And um, <clears throat> so in a sense, sometimes I use insipidity symbols in my work and sometimes I don't. And that has helped to, you know, see how I form my own vocabulary, <clears throat> so to speak. So people could still, some people call it neo insipidity, but I, I decided not to get too attached to the idea that I'm writing CBD. People can mm -hmm. bring their own interpretation to it if they want. But the CBD is a platform for which my work took off and it's still the basis for the work that I do. So <clears throat> I've always been interested in, I've also got really interested in, in the African diaspora story. Um, through slavery, I mean, we all know that where we come from, all all around the River Rhine area, close to the Atlantic, where all slave ports were dotted all over those places. So, Absolutely. you know, Calabar was a big slave port, even in the Enyong, you know, Uyo, Nguangiba, all of those areas had slave ports. And then, you know, we oh, gave up at that are, mm -hmm. you know, those places. So our people were shipped out into the, to the new world and when they got there, they didn't, they, uh, the traditions did not just disappear. They retained that memory of where they came from and continued to practice as much as they could of you know, <clears throat> the, the cultural practices of, and their religion of their home places. And uh, a, a place of particular interest to me was Cuba. Uh, when I realized that uh, the Cubans have what they call a which is 
the and the Cuban zoo practice of Bakwa mainly came out of our area. The okay. Igbo, Ibibio, Efik, the Jagam people. So when they got to the sugar plantations in Cuba, they formed a group where they could still speak the language. In fact, the Abakwa society was so great that they would, it was more, it was like a, <clears throat> a fraternity where they would, um, what do you call that? They would contribute money to buy each other, each other's freedom. Wow. Yes. Amazing. So it was, <clears throat> yeah, and, and, and they practiced the, uh, they have a version of what they remember of the Ekbe society, of the Leopard society there. And just to retain their memory, they have a map of where they came from. And when I saw it, there's a river that runs through it. That shows it's the Cross River area Cross River. that they came yes. from. <clears throat> yes. And they named their lodges according to some of the major um, tribes around that area. So that you know there because there's one called a foe which is links to a, the foot people and, oh, and so on yeah. and so forth you know and then when they sing their their ritual songs i hear my language in them wow you know so that's that's how how deep i you know it it, it got <laughs> and um a word like a yeni song for instance is referring to somebody from yeah. africa to the child from of africa, the land yes. <laughs> Yes. You know, yes, and Obasi, that's for God. Yes, that's, a, that's God, right. that's Obasi. <laughs> yeah, wow. and so it's all there. And the people are very, very um, interested in, in, in just retention of that memory. And I, I did a project through the Havana Biennale called um, Meditations on Memory, um, looking at memory as um, that which. Uh, we continue, which stays uh, in our DNA, even though at some circumstances may cause them to be wiped off, but it stays within us. And I went into Cuba to interrogate that, uh, that, that notion. And when we, uh, I did a huge drawing, I invited members of the Abakwa Society to perform in this space at the Wilfred Alam Art Center. And I never expected what I got. I just wanted to make art and then boom, these guys were here and they were drumming and I could see their drums were like a comma. They're like the real- Okay. Yes. <laughs> it's like the drum from, <laughs> from <laughs> you know, even the beats and all. So they, they brought a bakwa in the place and they performed. I was I was having goosebumps. It was like, what? I'm, I'm having goosebumps <laughs> just hearing that now, you seriously. Know? So I could pluck the, some of some of the men there. I could pluck them from there and put them in Cross River, and they would look like people from Ugoja, you know, you know, really dark skin and you know. And yeah. <laughs> so, wow. 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 So that's how I sort of interrogated this and 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 do my work in in that way. And in a way, my work always goes back to address this issue of culture. It, it starts the conversation about writing systems in Africa. It starts to come because that's, those are my, uh, uh, my main sources of inspiration. It starts a conversation that expands it beyond just what I'm doing at the moment. You know, it begins to talk about the, the Africa and its diaspora and goes back to, to Africa in that way. So that, that's the CV. There was really the, like the, the jumping off point. Right. A defining yeah. point. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Wow. I, I think um, your story about Cuba really, um, I find it awesome. I, um, it's, it's, I think it's a little bit emotional for me, just thinking about people holding on to these strands of memory. And um, you went and uncovered it. Well, I'm really good for you. I'm really happy for you. I'm, I'm happy you got to do that. I'm happy you got to do that. I'm really happy you got to do that. Now there's this, um, okay, somebody made a comment I'd like to show you. Yeah, Obi Mba Okolo. She says- Thank you, yeah. thank you Obi. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, Obi. Thank you for joining us. I really like your DP. So yeah, please see you too. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay, Jerry's asking where one can get this information from, you know, history books. Jerry, you can get Victor's book in Quintessence. You can order it in Quintessence or Amazon. Oh, Amazon. So, yeah, I do. Yes, I do have. Um, I was fortunate again to have, you know, people who, you know, someone who believe in my work and scholars who, who, who like, who believe in my work enough to contribute about 13 of them contributed to a volume about of almost 500 pages volume of a hardcover it's a thick book <laughs> <laughs> it's a big and, book uh, it's like that big, it's that big. <laughs> right so um, so that so that book is available on amazon and in nigeria is available at uh, at quintessence yeah okay someone this is my brother he's in bournemouth and he says um, there's a huge Cuban community there, and some are African looking, and some are, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's true. Oh, Actually, oh. Um, yes. there's, there's a professor, there's a friend of mine, Ivor Miller. You should look for him. I think he's maybe he's still in Calabar. He's been researching this Cuba, uh, Abakwa, and, and, and Ekme traditions and bringing people together. So I think he has contributed to, he has a book out, something of a, of, um, of a leopard. I can't remember the title now. So, but he also has a book out where he's, <clears throat> it's, it's on Amazon as well. And uh, he has brought Cuban Abakwa members to Calabar. So the both traditions have come to Calabar to perform together. Um, that's that's amazing. <laughs> so 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 it's there. So the connections are being made as we speak. Yes, you know. Yes, yes. Now, I want to like quickly type this so that people can see and go check it out for themselves. I'm sorry, you ha you'll have to look online, but this is an absolutely amazing interview. There's there's a lot of work around them. Victor, who is a Smithsonian? a uh, fellow who's sitting down here looking really calm and like he ain't done nothing, you know? <laughs> but I'm proud of my friend, I'm proud of my brother, you know? There's a lot of um, um, scholarly work around him, but please read this one because this will give you a lot of... Okay, okay, um, oh, Undiga, I'm sorry if I, I murdered your name. I, I don't like doing that, you know? Undiga, we will post the details for the book again. We'll post the details. Yes. So I want to I want to quote something which I found very very interesting from the trove. It says, "From drawings in chalk destined for erasure to monuments of steel galvanized to endure, Victor Epuk's work embody ephemerality and posterity." Hmm. I practice that ephemerality. <laughs> now I see. This, you know, that's that whole entire dynamic between um, <clears throat> how African art was like you just do it and then um, use it and move on, and mm -hmm. then Western art. And it seems that another transformation has happened here. Can you, can you speak um, to that? <clears throat> yeah, so in, in terms of ephemerality, I think art from Africa or artistic ideas from Africa is, uh, is both. Um, yeah. So there is a femoral nature of it, like when CBD, for instance, once it's written on the ground, once a person for whom it is meant for gets the message, yes. it wipes it off. Yeah. But if it's made to be permanent, they go to the forest and cut the hardest wood that will sit for generations and carve, you know, what they want to carve on it. That is permanent. Yeah. Um, so it, it's both. <clears throat> so in in the in my in the ephemeral works, basically, I was channeling that that notion of of memory as an ephemeral condition. <clears throat> it is meant to be wiped off for it to be finished. So memory as an ephemeral condition, being that I I I, I see memory of that which continues, is that which 
um, we used to define ourselves or which we used to know who we are, but or which we, we determined our identities, but our identities are never fixed. We're always being affected by circumstances or sometimes erasure. Only it resides maybe in a, in a, in a, another form, you know, but it's never a fixed condition. So basically looking at myself and how we've come through and now living as an African in another continent, having another culture and so on. So who am I really, you know? So what is our notion of what we really are? If I'm saying, okay, if I'm from a quiet home, well, okay. An experience of a person living in a quiet home today is maybe different from mine. So that sense of that identity is also changes and shifts. I have a son who is an American who yeah. is Nigerian by, because I said so. It's not, doesn't have the experience. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only reason why, yeah. yeah. And the yeah. name, doesn't give have, him a name, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah he, he doesn't have, he doesn't have, well, maybe by genetic or, you know, so on, but he doesn't have that experience of my identity as a Nigerian. So that's how I look at, I looked, I yeah. made that, that whole project where I would go into a room that is really big room. I put in a lot of effort to make this drawing in the space using chalk and ephemeral material. At the end of the period for which the work was supposed to be there, it would completely be wiped off and something else occupies that space. So that's- Well, how do you feel when it's wiped off? Um, because that's how, how it's intended. How do you feel? It's more about how, the, how you feel than how, what I feel. <laughs> yeah, you know, because, you know I, follow that, I follow that project that you did. And when you, I, I saw when you were wiping it off. And honestly, it hurts me. It hurts me as I saw the process, I was like, Oh my word! <laughs> you mean he's really gonna just wipe this thing like that? Yeah, it's, it's the same way we it's the same way we feel about life, isn't it? Eventually, we put so much, yeah. so much, and so much into it. One day, you know, we're gone. We're gone, and the world just the memory left. To move on, right? Yeah. So oh that, my goodness, that's... you're giving me goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> So, so that, that's what exemplifies, that's what that exemplifies. But for me, because that was my intention, it's not, a, so it's not about me, it's about what, what your viewer takes out of it. <clears throat> well, you, jo you just jolted me again. You jolted me that time, but you just jolted me again. Because now I am thinking that, yeah, memory is really what, um, my my how would i put it now i haven't seen you in years but um my interactions and memories of you have become the reality you understand that made it possible for me to pick up a phone and call you and ask you for something right and um that's that's amazing so i really i thank you for me you, you've given me something to think about really deeply you've really giving me something to think about yeah so the face i mean guys yes. listen um you, you can find victoria cook's um galvanized statue 17 feet tall statue in bahrain now you need to tell he needs to tell us how this man left this young man left to you to etinan to ife to washington to bahrain and many other places in between many many other places in between you know they say when when <clears throat> when you do well your 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 work your work your work takes you far so how did you get to the face in Berlin? and guys the little red thing in the back that's a model of the 17 foot statue <laughs> <That's one. laughs> okay. yeah that one that mm. one you can see yeah that's a model of the statue yes so he hearing you talk about that, I guess it just reminds me that I've been traveling a lot through my, throughout my life. <laughs> yes, you yeah. <laughs> I've been moving a lot from one yes, place yeah. to another. Um, so, yeah, um, I, you know, I just, I just do what I do and 
you know, like they say, when you throw your bread upon the water, you don't know what's going to eat it. So, yeah. <laughs> and it just, it just keeps going. And um, I, I, I got an email one day from um, uh, Bank ABC, Arab Bank Corporation, asking <clears throat> that there is a call for artists for their new headquarters, for their world headquarters in Bahrain that they would be happy if I would consider putting in um, my uh, proposal with other Bahraini artists. It wasn't open up international artists. It was just, it was the Bahraini artists, but, but somehow um, they found my work and they thought that perhaps my contribution would be, could be good for the, for the bank. So I responded and we started talking and, and I put in, a, put in my proposal and um, they came back and said, unanimous decision, your proposal was, you know, was accepted. So now where do we start talking? I said, okay. So, you know, then we, then did everything start rolling. How I'm going to go there and supervise. I've never been to Bahrain before. I didn't even know where it was. <laughs> You know, <laughs> you know, my knowledge of, of anything else stopped in Dubai and Saudi Arabia and you know, all the other <laughs> all the other Arab countries. It's, you know, Bahrain is a small um uh kingdom on the Arabian on the Arabian Gulf. <clears throat> you know. And uh so that's when I, you know, took my first trip to Bahrain. It's a long way out there. And um yeah. We found a found a fabric <laughs> found a fabricator there and um, was able to achieve that. It's uh, from what I've seen, it's 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 a and what the own press have said is the largest sculpture, public sculpture in the country. So that's how wow. it happened. And and before then, actually, I also have a sculpture in Washington D.C. A twenty foot sculpture in yes, Washington DC. Oh, that's yeah. even a bigger one. I saw that yeah. one. I saw the Washington. Is that the one in the schoolyard? In yeah, the, the school? one in the schoolyard. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, right. Commissioned by uh, Washington DC, uh, the, uh, the government of Washington DC. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Victor, if you would not mind, uh, someone really wants to see that um, model you made of the face. Oh, is okay. it is it movable? Yeah, I could lift it. Let's see. Okay. Okay, guys, there you are. That's the face. <laughs> That's what it but looks it's also like. on. Um, she needs a moment to let it sink in. Yeah, just think about it. It's in Bahrain right now. My aim is Bahrain. Yeah. A man's talent makes way for him. Please <laughs> believe that. Believe that. <laughs> you know? So this is this is the one. This is the the one in Washington D.C. Okay. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. I've seen that. Yes. And that you can see it should be the symbol on it and so on because I was. Uh, oh yes. Uh, oh yeah. Wow. Now you really you really transformed. <laughs> A lot of things from the uh, elemental stage to um, because I have some money questions for you. Huh? Okay, there's something you said. You said what's on the other side is never guaranteed, but we dare to dream nonetheless. Hmm. Is this your? You said it. I said it. <laughs> yes, said I said it. it. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Is this how you live out your your life, your art, day to day? I, mean, I think, I think so. I think it's just the basis of how I I push myself in uh, what gives me the impetus to move on and and to just wake up in the morning and say, okay, um, why not? <laughs> you know, all I could get is no or yes. True. True. But if I don't ask. I would never know. You will never know. <laughs> never, ever, ever, ever know. Never, ever know. You know? So I want to ask you, is there 
how do I call it an engine room behind you? Is there an engine room behind you? Because you, you seem to step very seamlessly between the old world tradition and um, how do I call it, modernism. You step between, um, in short, your book says it, the lines and connections. I think that's what your, that book says. Is, it, is that what mm. it says? Lines and connect, con connecting lines and spaces, connecting lines and spaces, you know. And okay, okay, you see, it's telling, feeding me the right words. Yeah, right, connecting yeah. lines across space and time. Yes, connecting lines across space and time, you know. And then um, I forgot my question. It was supposed to be a very, very intelligent question. <laughs> <laughs> It shall come back, but let me ask a question that um, my big sis Iko has asked. Iko Oko says, um, "What are your thoughts on sharing your work on social media, seeing that there are challenges from of copycats? Do you find other smaller businessmen artists copying you?" Um, I would say that yeah. Well, yeah, what can one do? You know, um, social media has its pluses and has its minuses, right? And um, absolutely. In in application of it, in trying to tell my story or talk about my work, I've actually gained more from it than loss. So if if somebody wants to be inspired by it, you know, I can't do much about that. Um, but that said. Um, I have seen a lot of young artists have tagged me on works that they've done that are inspired by my work. So in that sense, I'm happy that I could contribute something to their lives okay. or to their vision or to how they see the world or how they see themselves. <clears throat> um, so I would rather look at it as, you know, more of the positive side than, you know, I mean, there's always copyright, you know, copyright laws to protect me. If somebody wants to just lift exact my work exactly, yeah, and, I was going to ask, yeah, and plant it on stuff. I've had a, a young man did that once, and he was bold enough to tell to, to, to come back to me. I said, <laughs> "Oh, I just, I just made these socks," and uh, it was like, "You do? You just lifted my work and put it on a socks, and you want me to collaborate with you?" What's wrong with you? <laughs> so, exactly. The seas and the seas. Okay. That's not cool. Right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, if I wanted to put my works and socks, I would have done it. I know how to do that. But don't do what you're doing. And it's one thing about being. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's one thing about being inspired. Because I mean, there's nobody, no artist is an island unto themselves. I was inspired by another another artist. Or we are, we're all yes. being inspired. There's there's nobody who just came out of the womb and all the time is this original idea. The, our, our entire environment inspires us, and we then apply other things to make something our own. Um, so I'm not I'm not in you know. Um, interested in whether you know somebody's got the idea from I mean, I mean well, acknowledgement is nice if you if people acknowledge yeah. that um it's always nice to know that oh okay so it did inspire somebody but um that i'm afraid that somebody would copy me okay well what can i do we live in a world where it's that's it is what it is i call it to somebody i know it is exactly <laughs> <laughs> you know. So I remember my uh, original, very intelligent question, and it is: Is there is there a back room? Do you have a manager? Do you have somebody who opens up these um, uh, opportunities to you, or hints you like there's an opportunity here and stuff like that? Um. So. <clears throat> I do work with galleries. Um, okay. I have a gallery in New York. I have a gallery in Washington, DC. I have a gallery in London that represents my work. So sometimes so some of the opportunities come through there. 
And other opportunities, well, I'm also a semi-independent artist. I could, I do need assistance every now and then, but not like a permanent manager as such. Okay. Um, okay. So my, if I need to uh, use some assistance, there are people who could provide me certain things. And sometimes opportunities just come because certain institutions have seen what I do and they approach me directly. Sometimes they come through. <clears throat> sometimes they come through uh, um, the galleries that I work with. You know, so there, there, there. Sometimes you know there are art consultants who work on their own who I look who look for artists. Sometimes they go to the artists directly. Sometimes they go through their their galleries, and so on. So <clears throat> those are the different avenues for which um, I, uh, you know, I get stuff done. And the curators in the art world, they are curators as well who yes. invite artists to participate in their projects or they could go through whichever channels they choose to go through. Like the work in Bahrain, for instance, they came to me directly. Um, but through seeing, I think that I, was, I understand that they saw my work in a gallery in London or you know, somewhere uh -huh. on the internet. <laughs> you know. It's actually important to get your work out there, keep it out there. Right, consider. keep it out there. Because for, for, okay. for young artists who are listening, um, social media is your friend if you know how to use it well. It's your biggest signboard, you know. So just knowing how to use it properly and use the right tags and you know and so on that will put your work in you know in form just the way that it, the algorithm works. If you tag it, put your work and you tag it a certain tag, it would put it in the uh, display it on the face of people who are interested in certain things you know and so i i see young people who they come up to me and they say oh we would like this you would like you know i'm an artist i would like i'm inspired by your work and i go to their pages and i look there's nothing there except stupid gossips and and so on and it's like are you serious <laughs> <laughs> you know Where's your work? You say you're an artist. Where's your work? You know, so that is that is um, that is some of the ways in which which uh, um, uh, it's a gift that technology has given uh, professionals yeah. and everybody actually. So initially, you know, museums were come, you know, staying away from it. But now, if you want to be seen, if you want what you do to be seen, social media is way to go. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, they, they, they're mining your data, but, but you also get something in return. Oh, yeah, you do get a lot of things in return. <laughs> I mean, one of the things we've gotten, and uh, this for me, um, we've done this about three and a half months now. It's amazing. Every time I sit with UC and Ikane, and I'm still amazed that this has just been three and a half months. The number yeah. of people that have come back to say, you know, I was inspired by this, and I am. Um, I've been encouraged to start my own stuff because of that, and it just it just warms my heart. And then uh, we've had opportunities to collaborate with people, you know, uh, to help other people who don't even know us to improve their own enterprise. And um, yes. I think that's also a way in which you keep the ball rolling through life, you know, and uh, transform people. People, oh, okay. Tony Achibong is talking about, yeah, he was actually hey. in your works. Tony. Yes, yes, Tony, Tony <laughs> how now? <laughs> yeah, he's loving your, I'm still maintaining your um, your um, t shirt, the head. The t shirt, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yes, I had one. I almost wore it today, but I, 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 I changed my mind. I knew I knew that whatever Victoria book I could put on my body, he could he would outdo me, so there's no points. There's, there's really no points. There's really no points. But Victor, I want to talk about um, we have a few just a few minutes left. I want to talk about what um your um when I talked to you the other time, I said you've entered the, the line of creative enterprise and um how do you brand yourself? I mean, like, eh, hey, is that what they call it now? I say, yeah, that's what they call it now. That's what they call it now. You know, this is art for art's sake. I mean, this is enterprise, the mugs. Please, can you show the mug? That mug is beautiful. I don't know why that mug is not in my house. 
Oh, this is just one of them that I was drinking tea with this. Oh, not tea, yeah, but I was drinking ginger. Coffee. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so I kind of bumbled yeah. into this. I just, I didn't, I, I didn't set out to just be, well, I guess as you put it, <laughs> entrepreneur. <laughs> I sort of, um, it was, like I said earlier, I just, I was really interested in just putting my work out there and, 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 and making it, applying it in a way that people can, can use it or wear it. And um, so I tried out some t-shirts and then as I looked online, I saw that there's this whole, comp there's this whole industry for direct to garment printing. And I thought, okay, this is nice. It's, it's actually, I can experiment with this. But then there's another platform where you introduced me to, oh, if you want to do this, then we have another platform called Shopify where you could put oh, really? your product. Yes, there will be so, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so, so it, it's so this whole e-commerce business thing. So Amazing. I was learning, I was learning as I was going along. It wasn't something that was in my radar at all until one thing led to another and to another. So this company was set it up. You could send your products to be made. Um, and they will make it, but then how do you sell it? Rather than bring it back to me in batches and I have to look for a warehouse to store them and be running to the post office every day because <clears throat> where somebody needs something. <laughs> you know, there's a the whole other industry that takes care of that. In fact, they will, once you start, you, they'll, you'll have a website and you just have to put your prices on them and it's it, so it's all done automatically for you and okay. so through through this website to shopify and so the engine behind what i'm doing the merchandising side is really shopify it simplifies a whole lot of things for me you know i could have an assistant or a manager managing store asking people's questions and things like that but it has really made a whole lot of things uh easier that um and the works and the uh, you know and my products are actually made on demand they're not okay. i didn't go to china to print 1000 and it's just sitting there it's when you place the order that's when it's made and that's why it takes a little longer to get to the customer than if you're shopping at Amazon. <laughs> so I keep, you know, instead of tell people that it takes, and COVID just kind of threw Spina in the works again, because now it starts taking like one whole month for or you to more. get an order. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. So then I was giving, it was giving me a lot of issues, but things are resolving now, going back to normal. Um, because it, it takes about at most 14 days for it to be to be made. And once once you place the order, that's when it's made. And I tried, I keep it, you know, the limited edition. Each design is not more than a hundred, or sometimes I pull it before then if I feel that I need to refresh it. So and when I make this, the most of what you see on the on the garments and on the products are made directly for that product. Most of them are not copies of my original work. Hold on. Okay, so what you make on those massive scarves, which can be a dress for somebody, yes. you know, you actually make it just for the scarves. Just for the scarf, which is why as long as ah. I as long as I as long as I continue to be interested in doing this, I think people should realize that these are really limited edition. Maybe one day I'll decide I'm not doing it anymore, and that's you and already have. Okay, don't say that. <laughs> don't say that. Now, this is what I said. I, I, I have I have mental issues. Before you left Nigeria, I couldn't afford your work. All I've been able to afford so far has been a t-shirt. <laughs> How are we going to be able to get at least wearable art in Nigeria? How many of us here have to actually make a, a, a demand? Put in a request, yes, and then get actually, you know, 
getting into the Nigerian market is a little challenging because of you know the infrastructures that are not so much there. Um, well, I mean they're there, but it's just I don't know. I, if if I have if I have a partner in Nigeria who is willing to just get this stuff, I, you know, bulk and a partner with you. Yeah, and and sell it. I will there. partner with you <laughs> if you give me a discount. <laughs> I'll partner with you. <laughs> you know, and sell it there. Then I don't mind. But um, um, because then then Nigerians would be have easier access because it's closer. Um, yeah, I'd love because... to wear those vibrant colors on my. Um... I would, okay, I would love to. I would love to. I really love. Would love to have those calves. I mean, I was looking at your blue, this new blue thing. You're, you're <laughs> investigating the color blue, yeah. and I'm thinking now. Just imagine if I had um, a hanging of this on my wall. I wake up every morning and smile. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not a moody blue. It's it's a vibrant blue. You know. Yeah, blue. Blue is one of my favorite colors. Yeah, it's my daughter's favorite color for now. She loves blue. <laughs> so yeah. Well, I, I I think we should look at it and if if we order and we we, we say we would um, probably pay for the um shipping, that's also an an alternative, isn't it? Yeah. Um the shipping part of I mean part of why I guess most Nigerians have private because it's the shipping. I mean they could order it online, but the shipping is is another is another issue, but but what what could happen if there's a partnership is is people um, um, having a store an outlet where it would be a bulk shipment, the bulk sales, and then we just do that, and then we're you know we're done. It's kind of like selling in a museum store here; they order in bulk, and then it's just, you know, supply it. To I just and it, yeah. Okay, we have, we have one person here. I I don't understand the smile. I is that I is that a serious partnership? <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> okay, let let me see because uh, Victor, I can't just own one. I've known you too long to only only own one T-shirt. Be cool. <laughs> there has to be more. There has to be more. You know, and then um, my second to last question. How have you dealt with success? Success. I guess I should be grateful that I'm success. I don't see myself as well. I know. Let me not jinx it. Yes, I'm grateful that I'm successful to the level that I am successful. <laughs> <laughs> to the level that I can define success. Um I you know, I just wake up every day and, and I'm grateful. And I continue to do my work. Um that's that's I think the nutshell how I've dealt with it. I don't I don't focus on it because there's always uh, there's always a plus element. As long as I keep as long as I'm alive and I, I continue to think, I'm always challenging myself to do more. The best work is the one that is not yet done. So I'm gonna write that down. <laughs> Give me a minute. The best work is the one not yet. Oops, I yet done. It's a book. <laughs> you need to go and read that uh, that um the true article. There are many things about Victor you don't know. Many good things or not bad things. <laughs> many good things. You okay, need that, to know that, <laughs> that that article pulled out a lot of. Uh, I mean, I think she's, she's, there's so much so much stuff that I hadn't told it, people about my life that she was able. Yeah, to pull out of he me. loves Ella as well, and he loves what a guy called and Andrea something. I can't pronounce his name. <clears throat> Andrea Volumweda is a Volumweda, Swiss yeah. musician yeah. who plays. Um, who plays electric harp? And and just just to to say that I got introduced to that music by <clears throat> my very dear friend, um, who is now in memory, in Sikapesian. Oh, artist. yes, yeah. I used my to, condolences. I, 
right. Yeah, at work. Yeah, so, yes, so, uh, it, yeah. So, I, I miss him dearly. Um, it was uh, during my NYSD time, you know, in, in uh, Onitsha. I used to go hang out with him in Enugu. And, and then you've lived in several places. So. <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that, you know, I, I got with, you know, the, the classic rock was the thing and um, he would be blasting it in the studio and was hearing all this weird music I never heard before. So, you know, being, apart from being a great artist, he was also, it's, you know, it's got a, a very good influence in my, my early career. Mm. So, you know, I'm sorry, I'm really... You know, condolence to his family at his past life. Yeah, a lot of people loved him. When I read the um, mm. comments that people have made about him, everything good, everything good. Yeah, and they said he just embodied love for people. And yes, I think that's a great that's a great sign off on anybody's life. So, what would you like your sign off for your life to be? I'm not gonna write. What would that. you like? <laughs> 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 people would at some point. I well, look, I'm just. What would I, you like to say? I, I, I don't know how people see me. Like you've seen me, I, I can't control that. I don't want to control that. I know you can, but you must have an idea of who Victor is and what you're trying to push out to the world. Would we call you the memory maker? What would he call you? Because it's all your work, never, it's, it's, it's something I never really focused on, you know? Um, and um, so the thing is just to live my life as best as I can and help do what I can with people and, you know, show respect and love to others. What they make of it, It's, it will be up to them. I'm sure. I'm sure Nsikak did not sit down and say, "This is how I want the world to remember me." He just lived his life. He lived his life. Yes, he did. He so did that, live his that's, life. Yeah. So that's that's how I, I I tend to approach life. I just live my life and how what people make of it. You know, after I'm not here anymore, is um, is up to them. But I like that. I'm going to also <laughs> write that down. Live your life. Yeah. It's very important because many of us live lives that other people have defined for us. But you seem to have lived your life right from the get-go. You seem to have lived your life. And uh, I'd say you're very blessed. And we have been very blessed to have spent um, an hour and almost 15 minutes with you. Thank you so much. This is now your normal waking up time. It's my pleasure. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that that dog didn't start barking. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you, dog. <laughs> it's calm, eh? <laughs> Thank you so much. I really have appreciated um, everything that you've said, the time you spent, and then the candle, the, um, how would I call it, the, the vulnerability with which you've just been open to us. Thank you very much. I'm sure a lot of people, creative and entrepreneurs, painters, artists, people, we've, we've all been inspired really to, um, especially my main inspiration point has been, don't just look at life in the tunnel vision, always explore the, there are always possibilities opening up, you know, and then um, I think the other thing I, I want to say is um, surround your life with beauty. You know, I think that, that's something about surrounding your life with beauty. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Talking about culture, did you notice my my twin sticks? You yes, I, I do have, <laughs> yes, I have them on my wall as well. I have them on my wall. Yes, I have the yeah. bags. Give me that bag. My, my parents gave me a bag. I was looking at the dates the other day and I just... This is also memory, this one. Yeah, yeah. I, I totally love that. That idea of, of, of the king. I have stick. that. Yeah. How you carve, how they are carved. And it's, so it's not just ordinary twin stick. It then becomes a work of art. 
still becomes an object of love. And 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 so I, I appreciate That's the really things cool. like that from, from They're called our, Mata. Yes, you know, yeah. from our people's our people's ingenuity, product packaging yeah. and all of those things. Exactly. Well, so when when we talk exactly. about things that you know, we talk about these things as they did in the past, but they also in, inspire the present. Yes, they do. Mm. Yes, yeah, I allowed I allowed my past the past cultures I had to inspire what I do in the present and it continues. Whatever modernity doesn't float on um in vacuum. Yeah. It's got its it has to have its roots and I've chosen yeah. you know my own African roots to inform my modernity. So I surround myself with objects like that <laughs> to continue to remind me that. To appreciate artists who had lived, you know, before me and who are still creating, and you know, ideas like that. Yeah, and I think this would be a challenge to uh, artists wherever they are, especially those ones we call artisans, but they're really like great artists. You know what? You can push your ideas beyond the basic, beyond where it was fifty hundred years ago. There's a place for it, but there's a place that we can also. Mm -hmm take it to so you can always transform victor i couldn't have thought about a better person to round up this um transformers series thank you so much thank you very very much and thank you to everybody who has um, stayed with us thank you very much for joining and thank you for staying with us on unplugged um we've come to the end of our session today we have to let victor go catch up uh, the rest of his sleep and uh, let you go do the rest of the lovely things you have to do today. Thank you very much, Victor. Thank you all. And, um, Thanks, everybody. Next okay. Time. Bye. Right. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye Victor. Okay. Bye. Bye.